Hey, what's going on, everybody? Um, I'll give you guys a chance to come into the conversation. Um, I hope you guys are doing well. Welcome to the Black Financial Channel. Uh, I'm Dr. Boyce Watkins from Your Black World and the Black Business School. And uh, today I have the opportunity to speak with uh, a very smart brother that I met at the FraserNet conference by the name of J.R. Finwick. Uh, Mr. Finwick is the founder and CEO of FlipThatStock.com or Flip That Stock LLC, which uh, so it's a company and it's also a, a platform. Uh, and so uh, before I begin, I'd like to ask uh, my brother, JR, how are you doing today, sir? Oh, man, I'm doing great. I am doing great. Uh, I'm enjoying being on your show, man. Yeah, I'm glad that you're here. Glad that you're here. I saw you uh, gave a presentation um, and you were talking about Flip That Stock and you were talking about trading and investing and things like that. And uh, and, uh, and, and, I, and so I thought it would be great for us to have a conversation, you know, as, as two people that believe in, uh, in the wealth creation that's taking place uh, in the stock. Mm -hmm. Uh, now, first, let me ask you this. Uh, what, what city are you in? I'm uh, right outside of D.C., kind of in between Baltimore and D.C. Oh, OK. D.C. And, um, DC Metro Bay. And let me ask you this. Uh, how did you actually get into investing? Did you Was it something that you know, came from childhood or uh, something you got into in adulthood? No, really, I, I got introduced to the uh, stock market two separate times. The first time uh, I went to Hampton University and I, and I graduated from Hampton and my best friend at Hampton became a stockbroker. And um, he called me right after he graduated, said, send, send him some money. He was going to invest it in this stock. We were going to make all this money. I was going to be rich and not knowing anything about the stock market. I sent him the money. And the stock market crashed. Uh, this was in 1987. It was the biggest stock market crash oh, in history. Oh, <laughs> yeah, Black Monday, right after I sent him the money. And I'll never forget that call that I got from him saying, ah, oh, uh, uh, man. And, you know, I was upset. But bottom line is I didn't do my due diligence and learn anything about the stock market, right? So that's kind of like giving your baby to a babysitter and the baby comes back all bruised up and you never learned anything about the babysitter, you know? And so I, I treat my money like a baby now. It's like, I, before I give it out, I got to know something, you know, even if I'm giving it to a professional, I want to know what their strategy is. What are they going to do? You know, uh, mm. if the stock isn't doing what they wanted to do, how to cut losses. So that was the first time. So then years later, um, I actually, was building a recording studio. Uh, I, I've been playing guitar since age seven. And I'm building this recording studio and I was looking for a piece of equipment and I met this brother out of Baltimore. Um, we became really good friends. He had a studio uh, like I did and we just hit it off musically. And then just out of the blue, uh, two years after we met, he just, hey man, you trading the stock market. I'm like, man, I don't mess with that stock market stuff. I didn't tell him the story about, um, you know, I lost all the money before. I just, you know, I'm a business. Yeah, I'm a businessman. I'm doing these other businesses over here, recording studio, doing this. And he's like, you ain't no businessman. You ain't no businessman if you don't know how the stock market works. Mm -hmm. And so he would just beat me up for two years talking about I need to get into the stock market, learn how it worked and everything. And uh, And so finally, I ended up getting back in. But this time, this go round, I had him as a mentor mm -hmm. and I started taking uh, going to seminars, reading some books. And then when I, mm -hmm. I I really looked at this thing, I was like, man, I can't believe you can make money like this. And so uh, that's when I became obsessed with trying to, you know, to learn how the market works, especially uh, one day I bought a stock right when the stock market first opened up. And six minutes later, that stock shot up and I sold it. I made a thousand dollars in six minutes from my laptop sitting at my kitchen island. And I was like, wait a minute. Ain't, ain't nobody teach this in school. <laughs> I'm like, hold up, you know. And first I felt guilty because I was like, there's people out here really working hard to make a thousand dollars. And I made it in six minutes doing this. So I became obsessed uh, with trying to figure out how the market works even more and how to go in and do this again, you know, and uh, that's, that just led me to just saying, I want to learn this thing as much as I can and, and utilize it as a income tool and a wealth building tool. So yeah, well, that's how I got started. Well, what fascinates me about your story, uh, JR, is, is a twofold. One, um, 
you know, you went through the financial trauma of investing right during, right at the 87 crash, you know, I, which I think yeah. something like that was formative, you know, for you in terms of, you know, really solidifying your views on being careful with money, almost like uh, people that were, that were lived during the great depression. They're very different right. from people that live during eras of prosperity. The second thing uh, that uh, I, I observed just in terms of financial psychology and money mindset is the way you describe the emotional high of making that thousand dollars just sitting there yeah. at the table. You know, it, it's, it reminds me of how they say that, you know, a lot of the things that, um, you know, what, that we talk about when it comes to how money affects your brain, uh, it's a mm -hmm. very similar to how love affects your brain. You know, getting your heart broken is not that much different from the financial trauma. You know, like you, I'm sure you, Absolutely. Know, you know, you had some sadness that came with that, right? You know, broken. Tears, right, right, right. right. <laughs> of, of getting a thousand dollars just like that. I mean, you know, it's, it's not too much, you know, it's like you're like kissing a pretty girl for the first time and you just, you yeah, know, yeah. You know, and I think, um, I think that that's, that, that's really interesting. The other thing that's uh, fascinating to me is, you know, something that, uh, and by the way, everybody, I, I want you guys to know I'm talking to J.R. Fenwick uh, from FlipThatStock.com, and uh, he's a good brother. I met him at the Frasionet Conference. So if I, if I don't get a chance to answer you guys' questions, it's because I want the attention focused on the guest. Uh, if you have any specific questions to me, I see some of you are asking questions about investing, things like that. Uh, every Tuesday uh, at 2 p.m. Uh, in my master class, we actually do a, a pure Q&A where you just ask me questions. I answer them rapid fire. Uh, so feel free to go check out drboycemasterclass.com, drboycemasterclass.com. I think if you use the code word Poweronomics, you can actually get 50% off if you want to go check that out. But uh, but so, Mr. Finwick, one of the things I wanted to bring up, too, was uh, when you were talking about how you were just so stunned by, you know, the money that's in the markets. Uh, and you say, whoa, they don't teach this in school. Right. And which leads right. us. Well, why don't they teach that in school? That's what people want to know. Um, and uh, and it, it makes me think about something you said when you were speaking at FraserNet, where you actually said mm -hmm. that um, that the stock market is the great wealth equalizer, or you said something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, can you kind right, of right. in terms of of you know why someone like yourself is such an evangelist for investing as as mm -hmm. part of a, a family culture as a way to equalize wealth uh, in America? Right. So if, if you look at this and you look at the, the, the pillars of wealth creation, you got entrepreneurship, you have real estate and you have a stock market. Right. And so most of us are in real estate in one way or another because we live somewhere, whether we're buying or renting is still real estate. Many of us. Uh, and I know you're an evangelist for entrepreneurship, which we should all be in in some way, shape or form. But the one that we kind of like sit off to the side. It's almost like the stepchild. Nobody wants to be bothered with like a problem child. That's too, they're too complicated. And they don't realize that the stock market is actually has the lowest barrier of entry to get in. And it is not that complicated when, when it's taught the right way, uh, you know, using the right system, it is not that complicated. And so when I really learned what I started learning, I just couldn't believe it. I just was like, man, we dominate in everything else that we do. And, you know, and we, and we shun this and we believe these myths. Oh, you got to be rich. Oh, you got to have a certificate or degree or go to Harvard, you know, uh, to do this. Oh, this is gambling. Oh, you this gambling. You're going to lose all your money. You know, JR, you even said you lost all your money the first time. Yeah. But I said I wasn't educated also when I lost that money. Right. Mm -hmm. You get in a car and you're not educated, you're going to get in the crash. So once I started really learning this, I said, first of all, it gives incredible opportunity, not guarantee opportunity to generate passive income. We're always taught active income, work, trade your time for money. This is that sitting on the beach type money that you can make. The other thing is, check this out, uh, Dr. Watkins. You can't discriminate in the stock market. And I, wait a minute, JR, what, what do you mean by that, right? So let's take real estate. And, and, and I'm not against real estate, so I don't want anybody to walk away and say I'm against real estate because I'm not. I believe in real estate and invest in real estate as well. But if I was going to buy a home, right? And let's say that home was 3000 And I got 300000 cash sitting in the bank. I come to the owner. I say, hey, I want to buy your home. I got 300000 They could still say, I'm not going to sell it to you. And... It might be because I'm black, 
they could they could deny me from violence. But in the stock market, that computer, that laptop, that cell phone, you know, smartphone, it doesn't know what color you are. Enter that order. It can't stop you. It can't deny you because of your color. All it knows is the order you entered. And if you make money, it's going to give you your money. If you lose money, it's going to take your money. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it just it just was unbelievable to me. And um, the other thing I love about it is the the mobility of it, meaning I'm not confined to anything. As long as I have a laptop, a tablet or a smartphone, I can be any an, an Internet connection. I can be anywhere in the world. I can sit on the beach, you know, in, in Hawaii where I'm getting ready to go and I'm going to flip some stocks. So when I started adding all this stuff up, um, I was just like, man, there's nothing like it. And we as a people have to stop treating it like a stepchild and all this or whatever you want to call it. We got to bring it into the fold, learn it and dominate it just like we do everything else. Well, so, you know, well, you know I'll tell you, um, there was a guy, uh, John Rogers out of, out of Chicago, uh, the billionaire. Um, and he wrote a good article where he basically said that African-Americans lost probably about a trillion dollars uh, because everybody exited the stock market after the uh, crash um, in 07, 08, back when Obama got elected. Mm -hmm. So here, here it's, you know, you have um, you, you have uh, what I call the, the same old rope dope um, distraction, mass weapons of mass distraction that black people sometimes we tie ourselves into that cause us to fall behind and not know how it happened. The distraction mm -hmm. was on one hand, you had the exhilaration, you know, the symbolism of the first black president you know, and everybody's crying and excited and saying, we made progress, we made progress. Well, on the backside, you're giving away a trillion dollars in wealth because, you know, because you've either ignored the stock market or you ran away because times got tough. Because right. Obama came in right when the market was at its, um, at its, it had hit rock bottom. And the, mm -hmm. first, the first thing that Barack did, to his credit, was he passed that big stimulus package and that, right. package, that financial medicine, that economic medicine went straight to Wall Street. It went straight right. to the banks. And, right. and, and, and when, you know, somebody like me, when I see that they're injecting almost a trillion dollars into the banks and into Wall Street, I want exactly. my money in Wall Street. I want to I want to invest what they invested in. I want what, what they're having. Right. <laughs> you know, right, right, right. I want to eat that, too, because I know that's where the money's going to be. This right. Is where gonna go, right. And a, a big part of wealth building, I found, uh, man, is is just go where the money's at. You know, <laughs> or, uh, uh, you know, an industry to go into in terms of business, and they're like, "Well, right. should I go into the hair care industry or should I go to college?" I'm like, "Well, going to college is great, but the hair industry is where the money's at. You know, you, you, you're good at look, it. Fly, you let me tell you, it's so funny you say that because uh, just literally last night, I have a 19 year old daughter who graduated uh, um, high school early, age 17, went to a special school, got uh, uh, license became li a licensed cosmetologist at age 17 and um, worked for a couple people for uh, a year. I invested in her getting a, a salon suite. Now, just last night, uh, matter of fact, I went to look at a new bigger one, getting ready to sign a lease on this one. This girl is 19, right? And making 500 to a thousand dollars a day, love doing what she loves. And I said, if you follow what I'm teaching you, you'll be making six figures by the time you're 20. A 20 year old female, young black female, running her own business that she's passionate about. Only 6% of the people in the world, I believe, is, is a statistic that makes six figures or more. So you're right. It's like it's, when she said she didn't want to go to college, she wanted to follow her passion of hair. I looked at that industry. I said, hey, I, I'm going to support you in any way I can. So when we look at these things, like you said, all you got to do, Jesse James said, I rob banks because that's where the money's at, right? Mm -hmm. Just where the money's at and keep an open mind. And don't go out here believing what people say. Oh, this thing is too complicated. I've even had, uh, boys, I did, I did, and this is just, this is crazy what I'm about to tell you. I did a webinar last year in 2018, and a young lady got on the webinar. And she said, Mr. Fenwick, I invited a hundred of my friends to your webinar. And the overwhelming response I got back, this is in 2018, is that the stock market is a white people's thing. Mm. I, I was like, I can't, I can't, I can't believe this. I, I, I mean, I, I can't, are you serious? And she was like, yeah. And so 
we got to stop this nonsense and really take a look at this thing and go in with a mindset that we can do this. When I went to my first seminar on the stock market, there was a guy up there who's teaching it, right? And when he introduced himself and, and told his background, um, I went to Hampton University. My father was a doctor. Mother was a nurse. I graduated with a nursing pre-med degree. So this guy is telling his background. I'm like, he ain't go to the prestigious Hampton University. He didn't graduate with no nursing pre-med. He's not smarter than me. He just knows something I don't know. But if I can learn what he knows, oh, I can do this. And I, I can do it better than him. That's my mindset. And so if we started adopting that mindset, you know, uh, not only in the stock market, but just in life in general, I always say it can't be that complicated. That's my state. It can't be that complicated. And the stock market is not. When you take the time, effort and energy, you know, and, and, and invest in learning it. So. Um, well, I, I agree with you. I, mean, I, I think that yeah. it's, the stock market is the easiest um, kind of wealth building process to learn, actually, in my opinion. I, I think that that's yeah. what you're it's easier than real. I mean, real estate takes time because there's terminology you have to learn and right. you know, you know, it's, it's a culture, right? Entrepreneurship, you know, it takes a little bit of work, maybe about a day right. it takes to learn how to get your business started, but then it, it's an yeah. all process to learn how to run the business efficiently. Mm -hmm. uh, the stock market um, is, is uh, it's like turning on the TV. You know, you, you don't yeah. need to go to school to learn how to watch TV. Um, there, there's right. actually, um, uh, what was it? Uh, uh, Burton Malkiel wrote the book, uh, A Random Walk Down Wall Street, and uh, he, he uh, he's a professor at Princeton now, and basically, uh, he actually showed that monkeys can invest in the stock market, and he actually, <laughs> he literally had monkeys investing, and the monkeys were actually making as much money as the experts were, um, because right. because they, they're basically mechanisms in place that, right. um, you know, that protect you from, you know, your own lack of knowledge. I'll just say that, you know, and, and some of you guys who watch the channel, you know what I'm talking about. But but I'll say this um, to your point. You know, it does not take it probably takes 10 minutes to learn how to start buying stock. Uh, if I had a choice between being a, a sloppy investor who's just buying stocks and just buying them, mm -hmm. in, just almost like putting them in the closet, just buy. I'm just bought these stocks. They just sit over here. I'm a little mm -hmm. versus somebody who doesn't invest. Uh, if you had me bet who's going to have the most money in 20 years. It's going to be. The oh, yeah. Way. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. Let, let me ask you. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, brother. I'm sorry. I cut you off. Well, I was going to say, if, if, if a person and that's a sloppy investor versus not getting in the game. And if a person takes the time to really learn some different strategies, um, the, 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 the potential rewards are, are, are just freaking incredible. Uh, mm -hmm. Plus, this is one of the things that, that that is a side benefit of knowing the knowledge is, man, when you walk into a room, right? and you know how the market works, you walk different, you talk different. Because when you get in circles, real circles where people are making money, they start talking about the market. You know, I was invited to um, a special event by my accountant and uh, he had a gubernatorial candidate there and we're talking and he asked me what I did, gave him a card. And he said, flip that stock. Oh man. You know, he said, he said, my 12 year old, uh, saved up $3,000 over the summer and invested in uh, a stock and it's doing really well. And he's teaching his 12 year old how to do it. Mm. And, and we're sitting up and we're going out getting our 12 year old 300 pair of, of what a, a Jordans or something like that. Right. So, you know, we, we can make that shift mm. and, and, and get, we can get some of this pie. We get and this pie is good. When it rolls, it's real good to open up your phone and just look and, and just say, I just got to say it on your show. Damn. Right? Yeah. Well, I, I, I agree with you. I mean, you know, the stock market has been the best investment around for about the last 20, 25 years, I think. You know, and I, mm -hmm. um, and I, and I think it's um, I mean, while there's I, I feel there's reason to be reason to be cautious. Uh, there's oh, absolutely. A lot of opportunities. Out. But let me ask you this question. Um. You were talking mm -hmm. about in terms of your, your trading strategies at, at Flip That Stock. Um, mm -hmm. you, were, you were talking about ways that you're able to actually benefit um, from the market declines or even the potential market mm -hmm. crash. Like a lot of people believe the market is kind of in a bubble state that it, the bubble could right. burst. Uh, what are some thoughts that you have um, over Flip That Stock in terms of ways to prepare for a potential downturn in the market? 
Okay, so so I'm gonna I'm gonna let your your listening audience in and viewing audience in on the biggest secret on Wall Street, and that is we all understand. Okay, buy low, sell high, right? So if we got a stock, let's say for um, ten dollars a share, right? And all the share is is just a piece of ownership in a company. So let's say you got a stock for ten dollars a share, and let's say over time, let's say over a year it went up to $20 a share, all right? And you decide to sell it a year later. So you buy low 10, sell high 20. We all get that, buy a house low, sell it high. You know, buy whatever, antique car low, sell it high. But what most people don't know, and I don't know of anything else in the world where you can get it high and as it comes down, you make money. So let's say you got this stock at $10, it went up to $20 and you sold it. You could turn around and acquire that stock for $20. And as it's going back down to 10 and crashing, you can make money. And most people say, wait, 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 hold on. Wait a minute. That don't even sound legal, man. No, you don't. I can always tell how much a person knows about the stock market within 60 seconds of talking to them. And so in the stock market, you can make money when the stock goes up and you can make money as it's coming down. So when you turn the TV on, and you see, you hear, oh, the stock market's crashing, oh, the stock market's crashing. You best believe there are people like myself and people on Wall Street behind the curtain who are saying, crash, baby, crash, because we know the technique of riding a stock down and making money as it comes down. And they say it comes down three times quicker than it goes up. So for people who are in the stock market and you're looking at your, um, at your investments and things, uh, being in the stock market to me is a lot like driving car. You're, you're reading signals, red light, deer crossing, school crossing. And you and once you get into it, you can kind of see when the market's slowing down. It's getting ready to pull back some. Not a guarantee. Just like if you're driving a car and you, and you see clouds. It's not a guarantee it's going to rain, but maybe it's high probability. And you start learning how to read some of these things in the market. And you understand, okay, let me get out here. Or let me start protecting my 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 gains or man it's time to get out of here this i'm gonna ride this stock down as it goes down maybe some bad news came out or something and the way you get to being able to do this is investing your time energy and money into learning it and it's not hard again when it's taught the right way um so that's that's one of the things that i that that just it's just unbelievable to me when i learned this technique that is commonplace on wall street everybody on wall street knows this and they do it every day Right. But if you come out here and uh, I told this to a church, I was speaking at one time and everybody looked at me like I was crazy. And then I said, do you all think I would come at the invitation of the pastor and lie to you? Half the people put their hand up, said, we don't believe you. The pastor got up, grabbed the microphone out of my hand and said, I just paid twenty one thousand dollars in a course where I met Jr." to learn the same thing that he's teaching you for a fraction of the cost. And it is the truth. Mm. So there's a reason that the majority of wealthy people are involved in the stock market in some way, shape or form. There's a reason for it. They're not just, you know, obsessive gamblers. And once we learn this, man, it's a different ball game, brother. It's a different ball game. Yeah, well, so. I, 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 I concur and I agree. And, um, and I think that, uh, and I hear people, uh, at, uh making comments about the the, uh, the topic. And so I can't wait to see what you guys have to say about this. Um, um, mm-hmm. what I will say is, uh, uh, to everybody who just uh, came in on the black financial channel and on, um, on Facebook, uh, I hope you'll share this interview, by the way, I'm um, speaking with Mr. J.R. Finwick. Uh, his website is flip that stock.com. That's flip that stock.com. Uh, and, uh, basically, um, a lot of you are asking, you know, where to get started. Well, you know, Jr. has his platform as well. And then, uh, every Tuesday night we actually do, um, uh, investing and there's a, a masterclass that doesn't cost a whole lot that we do as well, uh, at Dr. Boyce masterclass.com. Feel free to go check that out. Um, and there's a lot of ways to, to learn this stuff. And I would just say to anybody that's interested, this is the best investment I ever made. This is the most important stuff I ever learned when it came to making money. Um, I'm, I'm really glad I got my college degree and my PhD and all that, but it's kind of like, um, it was very expensive. You know, it cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. And, uh, and, and if, and if self-education 
was out there the way it is now. If it was like that when I was coming through school, oh man, I probably I might have skipped college and just <laughs> right. I ain't no lie. Right. I, I kid you not because it's like the stuff you learn online is that's where the action's at. That's where the game's being played. That's where the money's being made. You know, sitting away incubated in college where you're living in this false reality for four years that's costing you seventy thousand dollars a year or whatever it's costing now. Um, I don't know if that's the optimal way to approach life nowadays, especially life as a, a person of color that's trying to survive and thrive and get ahead. You know, and I also think that for black folks, we have to be creative about how we think about the money making wealth building process. And those are two different things. Building wealth and making money are connected, but they're not the same thing. Right. Making right. Money, making money is is income. Right. Building wealth is having assets and accumulation of something. Now, the thing about about it, the reason they're connected <clears throat> is that once you build assets, it's easier to make money because your assets right. start right. making money for you. Right. So everybody, um, I believe, should aim at some point to have a capital base. A capital base is just a pile of resources that you can use to make money and to get the things you need. So uh, do you think mm -hmm. about this and I'll throw this out there, Jr. and I'll let you get the last word, brother. Um, if, if we just simply went back and you added mm -hmm. up, I want y'all to, to give me a comment on this and tell me what your thoughts on this. Imagine if you added up all the money that you spent in the last 15 years on fast food. Oh, like, man. KFC, McDonald's. Whatever. Um, you can stop right there. Right. Exactly. You can stop with the fast food. Let's keep going. Right. It's, it'll be fun. Right. Uh, Eric, right. buying new shoes, um, mm -hmm. going on vacation, getting new outfits. Going mm -hmm. to see Black Panther, Beyonce concerts, whatever it is yeah. that you have to do, right? Yeah. Add all that up. That black people is your capital base. That was your potential capital base. If if you'd had that and just put instead of uh, putting that money toward things that give you nothing and put it toward things that give you something, like if you'd put even a fraction of that toward the purchase, consistent purchase of say stocks, which are very easy to buy, then you would have a capital base. And what and the, the first step toward having a high income is having a capital base because your capital base starts earning you what is called passive income. You're making when you're an investor in JR, I love for you to also talk about that. When you <clears> have <throat> a capital base, if you have a bunch of stocks, then you wake up and you look at your app and you see, oh my, wow, look, I made X amount of dollars while I was asleep. <laughs> you know, because my capital right, right. Base, you know, because I own all these you know, these 80 or 100 different stocks all those stocks went up in value. So now my wealth has gone up in value. Uh, JR, can right. you speak to this a little bit? I'll let you get the last word, but I didn't mean to say so much, but, but, but yeah, yeah, no, well, I think you hit it on the head. And I think a perfect example is I started teaching my daughters about the stock market when they were 12 and, um, uh, and they kind of get in and out of it, in and out of it. But I have a daughter who is, uh, 20, 21 now. And, uh, but when she was 20, I think she was 19 or 20, I showed her how to open up an account. She put her money in it, which was $30. Now check this out, uh, Dr. Watkins. She says, she put this $30 in there and she found a stock that was 11 cents. She buys the stock. She's all excited. The next day she calls me and she says, dad, guess what? I'm like, what's going on? She said, I made $2, right? And she laughed like, like that's nothing, right? And so I said, what did you do to make the $2? And, and then I could see her mind like, Wait a minute, I ain't do nothing. I said, that's called passive income. Four days later, her $30 turned into $230. While she was at her part-time job, she was earning passive income and almost equaling what she's making on her little part-time job. And now uh, one of my proudest moments is when I get in the car with her, you know, most of the teenagers, 19, 21, and that age, they're on taking pictures for Instagram and she does that too. But half the time when I get in the car, she's over there looking on her phone at the stock market, picking stocks. And now I say, well, what, what you looking at? And she said, hey, 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 mind your business. Mind your business. <laughs> I like so I'm like, man, that is is, is so um, I just can't even tell you the pride I have that she knows how to go in. She can go into a store that she likes, pull it up, analyze it, go in there, buy it, sell it. I mean, Who's got the power? The person who walks into the Apple store just going to buy an iPhone or the person who's going in to buy an iPhone and is one of the owners of the shares in their in their store, too. You wow. see, that's a, that's a different type of power. You walk different. You go in the store, you might even put a little name badge on 
and try and help to sell some more products because you're one of the owners of the, of, of the store. You see? Yeah, so, so, you, so your daughter went from Instagram to MoneyGram. I like that. Oh, man. This, this <laughs> and, and the fact that she talks trash now, like, mind your business. I, you know, I'm, I'm getting my stocks. You get yours. Let's see what happens. I'm like, well, can, can, can you share? Can you share? Because she's, she's picked some winners. So um, I love that. If, I you love think that. about that. Imagine if we just had 10,000 African-Americans teaching that and doing that. And see, that's our mission to flip that stock where we're teaching 1,000 beginners how to be active traders and investors. What does that mean? That doesn't mean I'm giving my money to a broker or to a financial plan. That means I'm doing it. You know, there's really no need to pay somebody to do this when you can, when the technology is here to do it on your phone and your laptop and tablet. Mm-hmm. Take some time and learn how to do this thing and get in the game, baby. Get in the game because you're missing out. So well, well, I love it. I love it. Well, well, that's I think that's the message for today is get in the game and uh, and play a different game because you because, you know, you yeah, know, yeah. you know, the game of struggle nomics. Maybe you can play the game of power nomics and see how that goes for you. Wow. I like that. Yeah, yeah. So we, like we no struggle nomics. We most of us were born into that game, and I, I put down the ball and said, "I'm gonna play something else." <laughs> so, <laughs> right, right, right. So, uh, well, everybody, this is uh, Mr. J.R. Fenwick. Uh, his website is flipthatstock.com. That's flipthatstock.com. Feel free to go check that out. Uh, and also, um, uh, don't forget if you live in Chicago, I'll be in Chicago July 28th uh, of this upcoming Sunday. You go to drboyschicago.com. So if you want to come out, and uh, I'll be teaching there all day long. So feel free to come out there. Also, Los Angeles is next. Uh, that's drboyschlosangeles.com. And of course, every Tuesday night, we do uh, drboyschmasterclass.com. So you feel free to come and ask questions, things like that. But I encourage you, whatever you do, get in the game. It doesn't matter where you learn it or how you get it done. Get in the get game. In the game. Uh, because, um, you know, this, they're, they're, it's not even a, a debate, debatable issue at this point. I mean, right. it's clear that we have to shift our wealth building strategies as a people. And uh, and so um, it looks like a lot of people are grabbing onto this, though. So if you could give my brother, uh, Jr. a digital round of applause, tell him uh, thank you for his time. Uh, and also, please hit the thumbs up button, share and subscribe and everything else. Thank you guys for hanging out with us at the Black Financial Channel. And uh, thank you very much, Mr. Fenwick. It was a, it was an honor and a pleasure to uh, meet you again, brother. Thank you so much, Dr. Watkins. I, I truly enjoyed it, and and I appreciate and 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 pay honor to what you're doing. Keep doing what you're doing, brother, because uh, you're making a difference. Definitely making a difference. So, well, thank you very much, brother. Well, All right, Jr. Fenwick, flip that stock. Uh, you guys have a good day, and I'll see you soon, brother. And uh, talk to you guys soon. Bye bye. Okay. All right.